What's up, Bubba Bubbers? That's what I'm gonna call you from now on. Cause, you know, I'm down under, while most of you are watching from up there. Know what I'm saying? Anyway, welcome to the first episode of Jules Down Under! Now let's lay the groundwork for the series. Each episode, I'm going to give a short biology lesson, I will talk about one of Melbourne's suburbs, and share what I've been up to lately. And today, I wanna start close by and talk about the neighborhood. Melbourne is the second largest city of Australia, but when people talk about Melbourne, they usually refer to the metropolitan area of Greater Melbourne. The city of Melbourne is actually this smaller area right in the middle of the metropolis. Now that's called a local government area, or an LGA. You can sort of regard it as a municipality. Greater Melbourne consists of 31 LGAs, and each LGA is then subdivided into suburbs you can sort of compare these to neighborhoods or to districts. Confusingly, a suburb is sometimes also referred to as a city, even though LGA usually starts with the word city, such as the city of Melbourne or the city of Yara, for example. Regardless, I'm going to make matters simpler for you. From now on, whenever I say Melbourne, I will refer to the metropolitan area of Greater Melbourne. I will also handle its subdivision only on a suburb level. You can forget about LGAs, just be aware that they exist. The first suburb that I will talk about is Richmond, Victoria, located in the city of Yara, LGA. Richmond has 3 out of 82 designated major city centers in Melbourne. From north to south, that's Victoria Street, Bridge Road and Swan Street. First up, Victoria Street. One of the notable places in Richmond, Victoria is Victoria Gardens Shopping Centre. Conveniently placed only one minute away from my house. Now, since I'm going to do some grocery shopping anyway, I figured I'll just take, bring you along, take you on a tour, show you what it's about and basically how Australians do their shopping. So when you enter Victoria Gardens Shopping Centre, you'll be met with the food court, which contains various different types of restaurants from a McDonald's to a Kentucky Fried Chicken and also some other varieties, but mostly um, Asian style cuisine. When you take a ride at the end of the food court, you'll come across the Kmart, which is like a variety shop, which sells uh, plenty of different items from household to office. And as you can see here, the Victoria Garden Shopping Centre also boasts an IKEA. And when you take a left at the end of the food court, you'll notice a huge section named Coles. And that is where I'm going to do my groceries today. Australia has a couple different dominant supermarkets chains. Today I'm shopping at Coles, which is one of them, and this is the Coles at Victoria Garden Shopping Centre over at Victoria Street. Now, on the other hand, on the other end of uh, Victoria Street, you can actually find the other two dominant supermarket chains, which are Woolworths and one that you Europeans might be familiar with, Aldi. And here in Richmond, the Woolworths and the Aldi are actually conveniently located next to each other on the other end of Victoria Street, about 1500 meters from here. So, we've got a long way to go, and let's get going. <laughs> to 
to reach Woolworths Aldi, I'm walking down Victoria Street in the western direction. So Victoria Street, among other things, is known for hosting Melbourne's Little Saigon, which is like an ethnic enclave of Vietnamese expatriates. It's basically a little Italy, but then for Vietnam. And this has to do with the high influx of Vietnamese refugees following the Vietnam War. Walking down this street, the Vietnamese influence is immediately visible. The street is packed with Vietnamese restaurants. Although sometimes it feels as though some sections of this street give off a pretty trashy vibe. According to a friend, my suspicions might be justified as there is a rather high incidence of drug abuse in this area. Anyway, here we are at Woolworths Aldi. Right, so after you enter, you can find the Aldi right there on the right hand side. And as you can see, it's exactly the same one that we know back in Europe. Over here, we're going to take a left and then you'll get to the escalators which will lead you eventually to Woolworths. So when at the end of the elevators, you'll find Woolworths immediately on the right hand side. And for Australians, you'll sometimes hear them call it Woolies. The next major city centre is Bridge Road, which runs straight through the heart of Richmond. Unlike the other two, Bridge Road has a dedicated median in the centre of the road, specifically for trams. Bridge Road houses an abundance of cafes and restaurants, making it a major shopping centre. But it also houses a couple of landmarks, such as Richmond Town Hall. On Bridge Road, you can take a turn to Gleedal Street. Usually a perfectly normal street, but on Saturday morning, the proud host of a farmer's market. Gleedal Street also neighbours Citizen Park, where you can find a huge field where people regularly play Australian rules football, you can find a basketball court, as well as the local calisthenics park. More on that later on. The last major city centre of Richmond is Swan Street, which also forms the southern border of this suburb. Although, there is an asterisk tied to the story, but I'll cover that in the next. Like the other two streets, there's heaps of restaurants and stores. What I liked most though, was this uphill part over which you can see the skyline very beautifully. Although, you can see the skyline just as clearly from the other two streets. You can also see a building which looks like a landmark, but it's actually just a Coles. Swan Street was named after the White Swan Hotel, which was built in 1852. Today it is the location of Swan Hotel, which is one of Richmond's most iconic pubs. At the end of the street, you can walk under the bridge that is meant for trains headed in and out of Richmond's train station. If you continue westwards, you'll come across the intersection between Swan Street and Punt Road, the southwest corner of Richmond. If we go north here on Punt Road, we will find Punt Road Oval. Although Punt Road Oval technically falls outside the boundaries of Richmond, it still serves very much significance to this suburb, as it is home of the Richmond Football Club. Of course, we're talking about Australian rules football here. Um, they're nicknamed the Tigers, and they participate in the only professionally acknowledged league of Australian football, the Australian Football League, or the AFL. If you walk further north on Punt Road, the street transitions into Hoddle Street, after the Bridge Road intersection. This forms the west border of Richmond. In the east, Richmond is bordered by the Yarra River. And that's Richmond for you. In this rubric, I will talk about some adventures that I've been up to since the last episode. Last episode you saw me bring in a mattress as one of my top priorities since I had no other place to sleep on. Afterwards I went on to my second top priority, fixing a bike. I spent a day or two on Australia's top marketplaces which are Gumtree and Facebook Marketplace and eventually I found a seller on the latter in Cremorne, south of Richmond. And by Sunday the 28th, I had my own bike! Out of all the things that could kill you here in Australia, I didn't think something as mundane as riding a bicycle would feel the most probable at doing the trick. But I'm not wearing this helmet for no reason. Wearing a helmet is actually mandatory over here. But what's been the most troublesome in the beginning was getting used to the lane switch. Australia is one of those countries where they drive on the left side of the road. I've been to Indonesia and the UK where they also drive left, so it's not totally new to me. But unlike now, I've never had to commandeer a vehicle before while doing it. Another thing that's quite different about cycling in Melbourne as opposed to the Netherlands 
is the variation in elevation in Melbourne. Let me show you what I'm talking about. On Tuesday the 30th of August, I sort of had my first day at school. Today I'm headed for Parkville, which is where the main campus of the University of Melbourne is located. And I'm going there because my supervisor is actually giving a field excursion for a course that she's giving to her class. And she actually invited me to tag along. So I'm going to bike there, I'll be there in about 20 minutes and we'll speak soon. Yeah, just so you know, biking through this concrete jungle took way more than 20 minutes. I had an extra 15 minute buffer and I still arrived too late. The course that my supervisor is giving is called Ecological Restoration. Here at Royal Park, the University of Melbourne is working together with the Parks Council to restore the habitat of the white skink, a lizard endemic to Southeast Australia. This particular location in Royal Park is one of the last remaining habitats of the white skink in central Melbourne. Their habitat is being overgrown with weeds, which makes it hard for them to live because they need ground access to burrow themselves from predators and to hibernate and mate. So, what's the answer to conserve this species? Believe it or not, it's goats. So they're using a grazing conservation strategy, letting the goats eat the weeds and giving ground access for the white skin. And they do so with these fenced plots. Some of these plots are grazed by goats and some are not. The ones without goats are called controls. That way, the researchers can study whether the goats actually have a positive effect on the white skink population compared to not having goats. Here our tour guide actually managed to find the white skink from under a rock. He also goes on to explain that sometimes you can find giant centipedes like this big crawling from under a rock. Then over here, we see some dead trees. You probably think they're ugly, but no matter what your opinion is on how they look like, they serve a very important ecological role. Namely, their holes are home to many of Australia's indigenous microbats. And lastly, the researchers are very keen on promoting Australian native vegetation over invasive weeds. In this particular field, they are trying to boost native grasses. And in this roadside flower bed, they are hoping to cultivate some native herbaceous plants that were sown in. Some of them have already been successful at germinating, but the weeds still remain an annoying problem. Interestingly, one of the suggested counter strategies is a vital aspect in this vlog series, namely controlled burning. This will be covered in a future episode. I said I'd get back to this. So, each episode I will dedicate a maximum of one minute on my calisthenics journey while here in Melbourne. So, Let's not waste any time. I've trained calisthenics for one and a half years by now, and I have built a pretty good foundation in that time frame. As such, I've committed myself to learn what's in my opinion one of the most beautiful and impressive moves in calisthenics, the elusive plunge. This is a movement where you push and hold your entire body weight parallel to the ground. At this point, I'm at the advanced tuck stage of the plunge, which should be about 50% there. I start each training session with maximum isometric holds, then some specific dynamic work, such as pseudo plants push-ups or tuck plants push-ups. And I finish it off with some supplementary work. This could either be these pushbacks or some planche leads. The planche can take a very long time to achieve, but I've made it my goal to achieve the straddle planche, which you can see here, at some point during my adventures down under. The pushbacks are meant to familiarize the body with the movement, and although it doesn't look like much, I actually held it for a split second here. Hopefully I can get it up to a second, then two, and then at some point, five. So that's all that I wanted to say in the very first episode of Jules Down Under, but I didn't want to leave you hanging without any form of a lesson, so I'm just gonna do it like this. I'm standing here near the Queensland Cowrie at Burnley Gardens, and what they have over here is this bark set up. Now this bark used to belong to a tree, and at one point this tree was just a very tiny tender little seedling, but now it's turned into this broader, rock solid, woody bark. So my question is, where did all this mass come from? Did it come from the water? Or did it come from the soil maybe? Anything goes. 
So what I want you to do is think about it. Where could all that biomass have come from? Think of an answer for the next episode, make an educated guess if you have to, and then next time we'll see if you were right. And speaking of next time, next time I'm going to talk about the suburb Burnley and I'll mainly be reporting on the site where I am right now, Burnley Gardens, which is right next to Burnley campus where I'm studying. All right, up Aboveers, it's time to wrap everything up, and I want to end with this little rubric. So, there are a lot of stereotypes and tropes about Australians, is a knife. which you might believe if you have never experienced Australia before. So to make sure that you're not making a fool out of yourself when you eventually decide to go down under, I've created this little rubric, your Australian word for the day. And your first Australian word for the day is... It's good day. Or good day, mate. It basically means good day, friend. It's a way that an Australian can greet you, and unlike other tropes, this is something that an Australian actually might say to you. But be warned, don't come to Melbourne and expect everybody to greet you like this. So far, there has only been one person who has greeted me this way. Honorary mention, I will also teach you the word Womenjika, which means welcome in Woiwurrung, which is an Aboriginal language. Now, you'll never hear somebody greet you this way in Australia. But if you ever do come to Melbourne, you might see it on signs in and around Melbourne. But that was all for today, up Aboveers. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you want to follow my adventure, learn more about Australia, about wildfires, and about forest ecology. And also make sure that you follow me on my Instagram and on my Facebook page. Also visit JulesDanano.com on which I will upload frequent blog posts. And if you like the music that I used in this video, visit my SoundCloud account at Jules Lickables. Alright, that was really it. Thank you and cheers.